Hi, I'm back, and uh, while I was preparing for this part, I realized it's so important I should actually split this uh, tutorial up into two separate videos, even though it's the same image, uh, so that I can make sure no one misses this part, and so I can put emphasis on, uh, I mean, this is just so important. When an experienced game artist or illustrator or art director looks at your portfolio, they do not just see nice finished images. When they look at your image, you would be amazed how much they can tell about your workflow, about how laborious tasks were, and in general, um, how capable you are of putting nice images together quickly. It is critically important that you develop workflow habits that are going to impress people looking at your portfolio. And usually when something is, when a finished product product ends up as line art and uh, simple cell shading, it's much harder to tell how much work went into the finished thing But you, because you can always clean it up, redo edges, and the finished product can look uh, like it was done uh, very confidently. The real thing to be careful about is when you get into more painterly styles as seen in the background here. This here is a warning sign to art directors, to potential, to potential uh, contractors that this artist basically worked quite hard um, with a lot of brushes and brush strokes to make a general tree line here and add some lighting and shading and similarly with the clouds and even the stars seem like they were scribbled in individually by hand so sorry I'm touching the wrong keys all over the place here. But anyway, so how do you fix that? You really need to develop quick workflow for laying in background images. Um, so as an example, uh, it's critically important, especially when you're working digitally, but even if you start with a, uh, an image on paper that you scan that you're going to end up coloring for your portfolio, make sure as quickly as possible before you start cleaning it up you break it into layers so that you can work well and quickly make adjustments when you get feedback feedback from people uh, so what I did was very quickly just cut out the two people from the background so that I could start making a new background so the first thing I did was just knock in a very simple gradient fill uh, for the night sky okay now the next step you should do is make sure you get used to making your own custom brushes and you can, there are free brush packs you can download all over the internet um, make sure when you do something like stars it's simply like a splatter spray setting on a custom brush that looks like a star and just set the uh, the size and rotation and maybe even opacity to uh, to random settings and then you're, it's just a few clicks and you've got your nice professional looking starry sky the next step would be clouds, and you might not believe it, but all this nice pretty cloud detail came from one cloud brush, one click of the mouse, and then I simply have it on its own layer and set that layer mode to uh, screen or to overlay, um, which is brighter than uh, normal opacity. So, um, so as you can see here in the original image there's this uh, sort of skyline of trees, the, the canopy of the trees here. It's all one massive shape created by all of these trees here. So, how are we going to create that quickly and efficiently? Uh, I'm not going to uh, take enough time to do a really great job, but just to show you uh, the general workflow you should be thinking about, uh, I'm just going to create a new layer specifically for the trees and make sure I'm working on that layer. And then I'm going to, what I did is I pre-created, and you can find uh, tutorials for doing this for whatever art package you're using, uh, I'm sure, on, uh, on the internet. But I just pre-created a brush, and I did a very uh, crappy job at it, but it'll be enough to, uh, to show you uh, what I'm talking about here. So, And what I did was I set my brush to dynamically change its rotation and its scale, and to scatter a bit. So... Um, so as I brush, it's going to have to make it drastically bigger. There we go. 
So as I brush, you can see it's creating, and remember this was a handmade brush, so you can make it exactly how you want it. So it's creating all these nice natural shapes, and I'm sorry it's running quite slow because I'm recording my screen. But what you want to end up with is this really nice organic shape that went up too high, but I'm not going to bother redoing it because my computer's running very slowly right now. But you get the idea. So I've got this nice solid image on its own layer. So I could tweak the position of the layer I wanted. If I wanted to, I could bring it down to show more sky, etc. So to show you what I'm talking about, I'm using the same exact brush. All I did was choose a slightly darker color and set the opacity to 40 something percent. And remember, I have the opacity of this layer locked. So when I brush over here, I don't have to worry too much about getting toward the outline. Sorry, it's going so slow. My computer is having trouble here with the screen recording. So there you go. And for especially for an image like this, which has a cell shaded foreground, I wouldn't worry about making too many layers of shading. But because I have a darker a darker color set to a low opacity, I can go again one more time if I so choose to create one more sort of layer of shading. Remember, it's the same brush, almost the same color, just a little darker set to a uh, lower opacity. And there you go. I'm not going to mess with that too much more because my computer is really crawling here, but you get the idea. So, you can see how quick that background was, and you can see how much nicer and more finished and more confident it looks with almost no effort simply because I'm applying the right kind of workflow and invested a tiny bit of initial time to get some useful brushes going for me. Uh, and this is something you should have done by the time your portfolio is done. You should be really used to this sort of workflow and you should have yourself a really nice set of brushes for different things you're going to need like everything from smoke in clouds to uh, starry skies, even things like moons, blood splatters, all that kind of thing. It's very easy to make yourself or get a hold of. Um, so, and that's definitely one of the things that can help uh, separate your portfolio from those of other entry-level artists. Um, it can make a massive difference to whether or not you're the one getting the uh, the phone call or the interview.